Hey everyone, I'm back with another card share. Okay, this is again another post um, using the cookie stamp from Diana Markham. This is releasing this month. Actually, um, you can purchase this stamp now as long as it's still available because um, while supplies last, right? So uh, I again made another project. It's a card with that particular stamp. Um, let me show you what else I used. This is... Um, an old paper pad or pack from Cartabella called Homemade with Love. It's by Karina Gardner. And I use this kitchen corner um, paper pa uh, piece. And I used this um, cardstock. It's called um, Minty from the Stamp Market. The coordinating ink for that same paper pad. Um, this particular ink on three um, ink pad. These two dies, this one is from Honeybee Stamps, Pierced XOXO Hearts, and the Heffy Doodle, let's see if it's got name, Stitched Heart Dies. So these two are very similar in shape, but I needed a, a small heart for my sentiment, so that's why I had to pull that one. This one doesn't have um, a sentiment heart that I needed to fit the sentiment I used. And this is from, uh, paper tray ink. It is called Favorite Weddings. Um, and I used a sentiment out of here. And I also used some foam tape. Of course, now my foam tape strip is coming up. Um, this foam tape I got as a freebie from scrapbook.com. You can buy these in a lot of places. I used this Karen Ash um, Luminance pencil. This is the um, white, the buff titanium. Um, some shaker bits because I made a shaker card guys and my Copic colors because you guessed it are going to be green and brown these are the colors I used after this video um, showing the card I will sh um, share with you also a coloring of the actual cookies because it's an interesting use of cardstock so here's my card I had to use a pun, right? Um, so it is a shaker card. You can see the little bits floating around in there. Uh, I colored the two cookies here. Um, this is, I'll say it, one of my favorite um, flavors of ice cream, of cookie, of any chocolate. You know, mint chocolate is just, I know e either you love it or you hate it, I think. Um, and, uh, I really love it. So it's just one of those things from my childhood that I always remember. So anyway, um, there's a story with that. And it's inside the coloring video, actually, if you want to know more about it. So uh, you can see I've colored the cookies. I used that cardstock as the base color. Used my Copics um, to color the edges of the cookies uh, a little bit. And uh, also for the chocolate chips. And there's the little, um, what do you call it, pencil in there for some some gloss or shine, and um, little shaker bits in there. And I've also glued some to the front of the card as well. So this card is definitely one of those cards that you would see for either a wedding or, you know, Valentine's or something like that. Um, I'm trying to open the card and I'm having a hard time. I haven't stamped on the inside, but I want to show you something. Um, so I took some of the scrap paper and glued those base those down to the base. But what you'll see is I used the large die uh, or the die that I actually used to cut out the heart on the front for the shaker. I used it on the inside and instead of cutting it, I embossed it. So I used my embossing mat, this um, on top of the actual die. So instead of using a cutting plate, I took this instead and it will emboss the die. So I wanted to repeat the pattern of the same same heart shape that I used on the front on the inside and then I will stamp a sentiment here um, for whoever I send the card to or give the card to. So I know what's um, the the interesting thing is the color of the cardstock that I'm seeing in the camera is slightly less blue. It's more green um, when I see it through the camera and I don't know if the um, camera is picking it up incorrectly. You're going to actually see the same thing in the bit about the coloring because as soon as I zoom in, 
the camera changes the color of the cardstock, which is interesting. Um, it's uh, it's it's interesting how the ca uh, the camera is picking that up. So anyway, uh, that's my card share for today, and I hope you enjoy it. And so fun creating with these little cookies. Um, just so many things that you can come up with. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you um, get a chance to pick it up and play some. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye for now. Hi everyone, I'm back, and I thought I would share, this is sort of a coloring video, um, so you can see how I created these mint chocolate chip cookies. Um, as you guys know, it's one of my favorite flavor profiles. It's not for everybody, but it's something I, I particularly like. It's something that actually reminds me of my childhood. My father used to bring me to um, the local uh, Heis ice cream shop and my sister and I got to pick out our own flavors of ice creams that we would want to eat and it was always either mint chocolate chip or that bubblegum flavor ice cream so just a favorite I know it's not for everybody but I thought that was something that brings me back memories um, so how did I go about doing this you know for mint chocolate chip I have to use my Copic hex chart um, and I looked for something minty um, so the colors here that I chose are actually in this um, area right here, BG10, BG23, well, BG10, BG23, BG34, and I actually threw in another color, which is the 32. Now, I'm only using that for some of the dark um, dots that I have in my um, image. Now, the other thing I um, sort of decided to do was cheat a little bit and picked out some uh, colored cardstock that actually matches these colors. So this cardstock is from the stamp market and they recently released this color. Um, don't have it out. It's called Minty. Let me see if I have the ink pad. I do have the ink pad. Um, I have this paper here that matches this ink pad. Um, why not, you know, less ink this way, but also it gives you the nice um, solid color of the mint. So I have stamped three cookies out. I did this one beforehand and colored it up so you could actually see the finished product. Um, here's the stamp that is from Diana Markham. And I use this uh, Ink on 3 Fade Out um, ink for no line coloring. The reason I've used this is because this is what I have on hand that is uh, safe for Copic markers and it doesn't leave much of a um, hint of the color once you've colored it. It's a uh, very light. If you were to stamp this on white paper, let me see, I did it earlier and um, okay, I don't have an example. Um, it will look very faded or light in color and of course as the name says it's fade out. So this is waterproof so you could use this for watercoloring if you wanted to stamp an image and it is also safe for alcohol ink uh, coloring this is a hybrid ink um so um just so you know that um oh you can heat set it too wonderful so i have this on hand that's what i used you know you can use your stash however you want um i just want to show you how i colored this up and um it's not really intended to be a process video but so that you can see how did I go from this to this? Um, I stuck really to the edges of the cookie. I'm gonna zoom in here and then I'll adjust myself here. So I stuck to the edges of the cookie. Again, I always have a piece of paper underneath my um, cardstock. This is about 80 pound cardstock. It's not 100 for sure. Um, I, as I told you, I picked my Copic colors. These are the colors that I'm gonna be using. And this 30, this 32 is actually one I'm only going to use to do all the little dots that, or the specks that you see because it's, um, it's going to show up through the coloring that I do. And this is meant not to be, um, uh, I guess what you want to say, like in your face sort of, um, color, but more of a subtle contrast so that you get the look of a, um, baked cookie. So I'm, let's see if I can bring this have them both in the image I don't know so you can kind of see a portion of that um, it makes it look realistic this way 
Uh, and I want to color the cookies so that they're not all the same direction. Like the shadow for this one is um, around the um, around the side of it mostly. So you can see the shape of the cookie. This chocolate chip here is right here. Um, uh, when I stamped it, it's pretty much in the same position here and here, but here it's in a different position. So maybe I'll color this so you can see that I'm going to put the shadows in the same spot, but the cookie will be oriented differently. Okay, because that, that chocolate chip that's right down here on the edge is actually on the other side. So I'm going to use this as the darker edge of the cookie this time so that when I put them on my card, they look more random. Does that make sense? So it's it. there is some planning here when you're doing this. <laughs> it's not just color whatever. Um, there's some planning that I do. Um, and you know, again, you can do as, you can do it however you like. Um, I'm gonna start with a darker color or the darkest color I should say. And that is um, not the three, two, but uh, is it the three, four? Yeah, the three four is the darker of the shading that I'm going to use anyway. The three two is darker than this one, um, based on my uh, swatch chart. But I'm gonna, you know, obviously it's going to show up more. As I said, I'm just gonna use it for dots. Because the cookie does have dots, you can't really see it very well in the stamped image simply because it's a it's a fade out ink. So really what I'm doing here uh, right now is kind of just tracing over the lines of the stamped image. And then there are portions where there is a like uh, shadowed area, which I'm also coloring over. So I'm just kind of lightly going around that edge of the stamp because I'm going to cut it close to that stamped line. I don't like to leave an outline. That's just not my thing. Um, I like to cut right on that edge of the image. So that's the darker part. And I will come back with this color again because I'll go up and down the shading so you can see it right now. I know it doesn't look very interesting right now, but as we go along, it'll look more interesting. So again, I'm going to go over that color. Um, there's going to be more shading towards the bottom of this part of the, the cookie that I'm showing you simply because that's where the shading is going to be on this particular one. So it looks uh, like the cookie baked naturally in an oven where you have uh, more shading on a different side than the other cookie that I created. Um, and you can see the chocolate chip on the edge is here. There's one here and there's also one on this side. So, oh, you can't see that. So there's two on the edge. It's sort of flipped in this particular image because my stamp was the other direction. So I'm just going over that so I can make that edge darker. And then I'm keeping I'm keeping right on top of the line here, just again, to make it a little darker. And this equates to how crispy are your edges of your cookie? That's how I like to think of it, right? The darker that edge, the crisper that image or the crisper that cookie is going to be on that side, right? Around that edge. And conversely, the lighter it is, the chewier. You guys know how that works, right? For baking. Okay. So um, I know I'm not telling you the colors. That was BG23. I'm sorry. Or 23. Um, now I'm doing my lightest. And that is BG10. I forget to show you the caps. I think I've told you that. I forget to show you that. So I, now I'm just going to do some blending. This is such a light shade that you barely see this unless you go over it a number of times. Um, and I know this because I've already colored one cookie. So this is going to fade out big time. Unless I keep going over the spot with that ink. Because then you're laying down more ink, and the more ink you lay down, the darker it gets. Okay? The more ink you lay down, the darker it gets. 
So I'm sticking pretty close to this line right here. I don't want it to be real fat um, at the top part of the cookie. The, the thicker part is going to be down here. So I'm bringing it farther away from the edge of the cookie um, in terms of the shadow effect. So again, I'm just going to lay a little bit of ink here just for some blending. No right or wrong way to do what you do, okay? Just have fun. All right, so that's enough of that shading. Um, now I'm going to go back over that again. BG23. I can never get my caps so that you can see them. <laughs> Either my hand is in the way or my cap is just off camera. I'm so sorry. Um... I feel like every time I do this, I wait too long and I get out of practice and I don't forget. Okay, so hopefully that's not too hard for you to see that. It's so zoomed in, you might not be able to see it all anyway. Um, and as the ink dries, it will lighten up a little bit. Uh, BG34. So again, just the lightest touch around the edges of the cookie and then I'll be ready to move on with the chocolate chips so you're probably wondering you know no oh, you, you don't have to color the whole cookie why because it's already mint colored with the cardstock and I'm really staying on my tip okay um, just so that I can get a very thin line of the darkest color I'm really on that tip you know, just uh, the lightest touch. And it is hard for me to do this through the camera because um, I normally am a little closer to the, the work. I know it looks close for you, but for me, I'm actually quite a bit away from the camera itself. All right, so let me, I'm not happy with the shading, so I'm going to um, use my lightest color, the BG10, and just um, do a little bit more blending out from the edge. Just a little bit of flicking to give me some cookie shadow here. And I'm flicking towards the inside of the cookie because, you know, kind of going around in a circle a little bit. Um, because if you, if you color in a line, the line is going to show. So I'm just like, laying the ink and flicking towards the center. Now, as I get towards the top of the cookie, I'm going to start with the line again on right on top of where I, where the ink already is. Just blending out that color rather than bringing more shading in along the edge of the cookie because I don't want the um, edge to be really wide along the top of the cookie right here. I want more of a shadow down here. And you can kind of see it forming as I do my flicking. All right, so flicking towards the center and I'm adjusting the direction of my marker so that I can do that. You can also turn the paper, but because I'm so zoomed in, if I do that, I'm probably going to be off camera. So I'm trying to stay in camera for you while also showing you what I'm doing. Okay, let's let that dry a little bit. I'm going to move on to the um, browns and for the browns, I have three colors. Um, 49 E40, oh, E49, uh, 49, which is the darkest, E59 and E47. Oh. I always say it like it's a number together, like 47. It's actually 4759, okay? So you guys know that, right? For Copics, that is. Um, so we're going to start with, I'm going to start with the darkest color, um, and since my shading for the cookie is around this bottom part right here, my darkest color is going to start from the direction of that shading. So I'm going to go along the edge of the cookie right here where there's a chocolate chip with this darkest color. Okay. And it's just a little bit. 
even if the chocolate chip, well, sometimes the chocolate chip is facing the other direction. So this chocolate chip is actually facing, the point is facing me. Um, so I'm going to put the darkest color over on this side. Because again, this cookie shadowing is going to be around this side here. So um, you can decide if you want to do it that way. You don't have to. You can do it the other direction. Um, it's up to you. It's your masterpiece. So that's what I'm going to do. It's just for ease of me to remember that. So this is the darkest shade of brown that I'm starting with. And these chips are not that big, so it really is going to take long to color all of them. And then I'll come back and add some shading to each one. And by then the edges should be a little bit drier. Okay, so that's four nine. This is five nine. So this is the mid-tone walnut. They're so close in color, it's uh, probably going to be hard to see anyway. Now, I, what I didn't do is add any highlights to the actual cookie. Um, what do you got it? chocolate chip cookie, the chocolate chips. I didn't add any highlight to them. I can do that with a, um, a pencil, a white, a white, um, color pencil, but I'll, I'll do that before I, um, attach them to my project. So last color for the browns, E47. This is the lightest shade of brown. So I'm just going to touch the edge of that and blend it in. And so you can barely see that ink, right? That fade out ink, because it is such a light color. Um, and it will look like that if you, you know, it will look, it'll basically fade out as its name means. So it does what it says. I'm not even really tracing too much the actual image that's stamped. Okay. So that's the chocolate chips, and I may want to add maybe just a touch of that darkness again. Sometimes that gets lost, so I'm back with the E49. I'm just putting some of that darkness back in, because sometimes it gets blended out. So I'm just coming back with that darker edge. Oops. Now this isn't really Copic paper that you, you, you know normally would color images on. Um, you know, it's not super smooth and um, it's not thick. Don't be discouraged by that. You can color on any paper you want. Um, so now I'm gonna add some shadows like I did with this cookie. So you could see in this cookie, if you're looking closely, there are shadows around each of the chocolate chips on one side. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add that shadow in and I'm going to start with this. Actually, I'm going to start with a darker color, the darkest color, this BG34. And I'm just going to add some, ooh, probably shouldn't have done that. Add some shading there on the one side of the chocolate chip to give it some shadow. Because, you know, the cookie has the shadow on this bottom half. And that's what I'm following. Right? This is, again, your lesson in the light source. Where's the shadow of the cookie? Um, the other thing, too, is they can come from different directions. If you have... You know, chocolate chips, when they sit on a cookie, they may be pointing different directions. And I think that's what she had actually drawn in here or intended in here, but I'm going to make them on one side just for my own ease of coloring. Uh, they're all going to have the same shadow direction. Why make it difficult? Okay, so that's the darkest color, which really isn't all that dark. It's You can see it sort of blending in. 
Now we'll go with mid-tone, BG23. Um, just going right over that. I don't want to extend out the shadow too much. I'm just kind of adding a little more depth with the shading. Can you see what I'm doing? I hope you can see it. My, my hand is kind of I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way and my marker so you can actually see what I'm coloring. And I'm just kind of, again, lightly touching the tip to the paper. Not too much. You know, I'm not pressing down real hard. Uh, now BG10 is next. And so, again, this is now just blending out that color a little bit. So we get it to look a little more natural. And you can go around all the way if you want. Because, you know, the shadow is kind of lighter in some spots. The further you get... Um, the closer you get to the light, the shadow is lighter, right? So on this side, it's actually lighter. So there we go. So now I'm going to add some um, little specks. Um, as I was saying, if you look at this cookie closely, you could see little dots in here. And she's added them to the stamped image, but because of the ink that I used, you can't see them very well. So I'm going to add those back in um, using... Uh, let's see, BG34 and BG32. So I'm just going to start, and I'm only going to do it like in certain spots. So it's not going to be a lot of dots. It's just going to be some spread out just to add some detail back in the shadows, shadowed areas, and then some of them around the chocolate chip cookies. It's not all going to be, it's not going to be all the way around the cookie. It's just going to be in certain spots. And you can decide how many you want. I just, I wanted to add that level of detail back. To the cookie itself. Just more, more interest, right? Because you can't just have a flat looking cookie. It has to look dimensional. And I think this gives it that extra dimension. do some up here and some of these dots are smaller than others they're not all the same size that keep that in mind too I'm trying to make them different different sizes so some I'm touching very lightly and some I'm actually pressing down a little bit more okay so that's BG34 we'll come in with a 32 which actually shows up as well And this cookie is going to look different from the other cookie. Like I said, you want it to look different. You don't want them all to look the same. Because when you bake cookies, do all of your cookies look exactly the same? I don't think so. This is making me hungry, by the way. I don't have these in the house. I'd have to make them from scratch. <laughs> all right. So cookie crumbles. All right. So now the only thing that's really left to do is to fussy cut it. But I don't need to do that on camera with you, do I? Um, let me um, zoom out so you can kind of see the two together. There we go. Um, there's the two cookies together. They do hopefully look different from one another. And I'm just going to fussy cut it with some scissors. No big deal, right? All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, guys. So one thing I forgot to mention. Okay. Um, I've fussy cut this out, and you can kind of see that the this is the color of the paper, and you can kind of see that beyond the edges of the ink here. So one thing that I like to do um, with any stamped image, really, if I stamp it in black, I'll use a black marker. But since this is um, a cookie where the edge is colored with uh, a darker color, a dark minty color. I'm just going to go along the edge 
and ink those edges with the same Copic marker that I was using for coloring. This is the BG-34. Okay. So normally your cookie is going to be darker at the edges, right, when they're cooked. Um, that's usually what happens is the darker edge is on the outside part. Unless you totally burn it, but, you know. We'll just assume these are cooked perfectly. So I'm just gonna, going around the edges with the ink. And I think it finishes off, it off because any um, pieces you didn't cut perfectly or, you know, if you've got a piece of paper that shows the, the lighter color at, at the edge, you don't have that problem with this now because the cookie looks more realistic with that darker edge, right? There's my cookie that I created. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back with my card. Bye.